first quarter GDP numbers will be announced on Monday, August 31st. A CNBC TV 18 poll shows that uh, the first quarter GDP numbers could come in at minus 20% almost. And uh, uh, this is with agriculture being the best performer with almost a 5% growth. The growth story stops there. Manufacturing is seen to have contracted by over 30%. And uh, in services, uh, the number is varying widely. Under the heading trade, hotels and transport, estimates vary from, you know, minus 21 to minus 50 percent. What I'm giving you here is the average. Again, in finance, insurance and real estate, the estimates are varying from minus 8 to minus 30. Again, what I gave you is just an average. Look at the range. It's a huge variation. Because these variations of estimates are so huge, we have decided to invite an expert who has been involved in putting together the GDP at the Central Statistical Organization for many years. I have with me Mr. Alok Kar. Uh, he was formerly Deputy Director General at the CSO, involved in putting together the national accounts and now a scholar at the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata. Mr. Kar, uh, thank you very much. This is a classroom. And this is a classroom on how the GDP is put together by the CSO. But just wait for me a minute. Let me first put down the various headings under which the quarterly GDP and the GVA, gross value added, are presented by the CSO. These are the headings. Uh, the segments include agriculture, fishing and forestry, mining and quarrying, manufacturing. And uh, then you have electricity, gas, water supply. They are called utilities. And then you have another large category called trade, hotels, transport and communication. This is where most of the confusion is, uh, how it is calculated. And then you have finance, finance, insurance and real estate. Again, a lot of confusion on how this is calculated. And then you have public administration, defense and other services. All these are largely non-market. They are offered by the government uh, in terms of schools and public health. So let me invite uh, Mr. Alok Kar. Uh, to explain to us how this uh, uh, entire exercise is done. As I told you, he, is, uh, he was formerly the Deputy General, uh, Deputy Director General at the CSO. Well, uh, well the first question to you, Mr. Carr, for, uh, you know, can you just tell us how are annual and quarterly GDP calculated? What is the difference? Yeah, first the similarities to uh, calculate, compile GDP, the entire economy is divided into number of segments. For both the quarterly as well as annual estimates, the estimates are put segment by segment. Mm. Now, for annual estimates, mm. in fact, revised estimates, not mm. the provisional ones, mm. uh, is largely based on current data. Okay. And the aggregation is done, compilation is done at a very disaggregated level. Okay. Small segments put mm. together and uh, we get the GDP. Mm. When it comes to quarterly estimate, there's no current data. Mm. So what is required to be done is um, making use of whatever is available. Okay. Some indicators. Okay. Okay. The uh, current data not being available, mm. the quarterly estimates are mm. uh, broadly based on benchmark indicator method. Okay. okay. Based on extrapolation, broadly extrapolation of annual GDP series. Okay. So you take past year's GDP and develop a benchmark index and extrapolate from that. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll try and get that explained, especially for specific sectors like trade and uh, finance as we get by. First, I think, let me go to one that perhaps everyone understands, agriculture. How is the agriculture uh, and uh, the allied, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, forestry and uh, uh, dairy, all these, how are they calculated? Yeah. Uh, so, when, you, when we say agriculture, uh, livestock livestock product is also included in that yes and the broad agricultural sector sector mm. also includes fishery okay all these mm. uh, we get annual estimates even quarterly estimates okay 
and um, it is done at a very detailed level mm. there are some 50 different 50 plus different crops mm. then uh, livestock various species and <clears throat> then uh, fish catch mm. are put together yeah. and we get the estimate of livestock Oh. Agriculture, livestock, and fishery. Okay. The data comes from the state departments, state oh. agriculture. Okay. Okay. The state departments give you the uh, uh, data. Yeah. And this applies for both annual as well as quarterly estimates. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Carr, now before I come to the next big entry, which is going to be manufacturing, there I'm sure you're going to use the word GVA, gross value added. So, yeah. can you first explain to us the difference between GDP? and GVA, that is gross value added. Okay. This GDP or gross domestic product or yeah. say net domestic product. Yeah. The term domestic product is reserved for the economy as a whole. Yeah. Or well-defined geograph geographical territories mm. like state, union territories, mm. etc. Mm. But when we talk about a measure of production for a small single unit, Okay. Or even an industry, mm. say manufacturing or agriculture, we refer to that measure as GVA, okay. gross value added. Okay. And the difference is gross value added is measured at basic price, which is whatever the enter enterprise earns mm. by way of, um, uh, I mean, sales or production. Mm. Deducting the raw materials, other inputs, mm. we get a value okay. that is called value added. Okay. And when uh, we deduct the taxes and add the subsidies, mm. more spe uh, uh, specifically product taxes and product okay. subsidies, okay. we get GVA at basic price. Okay. So you deduct taxes and you add subsidies basically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Now let me come to a particular unit, manufacturing unit, how mm -hmm. will you calculate the gross value added? You said what? You take the full revenues and from that you subtract what? Subtract the inputs, mm. which is which in national accounting is called intermediate consumption. Okay. And what does it include? It includes raw materials, it includes other expenses on electricity, water, mm. fuel, okay. transport, all the expenses that goes into the production process okay. is called intermediate consumption. Okay. So that is what is deducted out of okay. the value of output, mm. which is the revenue the mm. um, enterprise earns. Mm. So ca can you say EBITDA is value added? Uh, not exactly. Okay. I mean, when we say value added, it includes compensation of employees. Okay. It uh, and then mm. when uh, IBDA, uh, IBTDA, IBT, uh, income tax, uh, no taxes, interest, inter first the interests are there in this uh, figure, okay. but the rents that are paid out is not there. Oh. which is maybe a significant part for particular enterprises. Okay. And the other difference is um, tax. Okay. When we talk, talk talk of tax, in business accounting, the, the income tax or corporate tax mm. is treated separately and okay. are called direct taxes. Okay. And the indirect taxes, which are the sales tax or GST Mm. Do, those are called product taxes, okay. Okay. and these are, uh, are to be distinguished okay. when we have to talk about value added. Okay, so but yeah, basically we can't call it EBITDA because also what money is paid to the employees is included, and largely yeah. the value added is distributed between the employees and as operating surplus, which is includes profits and uh, uh, interest. Then yeah. interest. Yeah. Yes, got that. Okay, now that is uh, how you calculate the GVA. Okay, mm -hmm. let me do one thing, Mr. Carr. At this point, I will take a break because okay. after this come the two most important questions to you. How does the CSO calculate the gross value added for the vertical trade uh, uh, hotels and uh, restaurants? And how does it calculate for finance? Because in this, there is a lot of uh, confusion. We are coming back with those two most important questions to Mr. Carr. Stay with us.